Hi, I'm Chris Kokalis, and this is Lee Donovan, and we're here to talk about the new shuttle. So we just went uh, and rode this today. You've had it for a while. We've done a few videos with Shimano that are coming out soon. Um, I did a huge ride on Saturday. You did a huge ride on Saturday in California, mine in Arizona. And then today we, we did a pretty big ride. And uh, uh, probably the biggest thing on the new shuttle to talk about, well, there's two big things. One is the new battery. So 726 watt hours. You've got the old bike with 500 watt yeah. hours. A little bit of range anxiety here and there every once in a while. <laughs> A few times. And uh, what do you think of this? Oh, well, I mean, it's it's a whole nother, a whole nother adventure. I was just saying um, earlier to some people that I did that my ride on Saturday, um, I did 5,500 feet of climbing, 29 miles, and I still had two bars left after the ride. I mean, you know, I did a lot of it in eco, but I was blown away at how much riding I did. The, the battery is... Um, yeah, it's just more opportunity to go further. It's great. Yeah, it's a little surprising. I mean, also this weekend I did a ride and we were at almost 19 miles before I dropped one bar. <laughs> and uh, we had done wow. almost 1,800 wow. feet of climbing at that point. Um, it was a 24 mile ride. So at that point it was just full boost. <laughs> Um, and, and it's still, we only dropped two bars on yeah. a 24 mile ride. So, um, today we did a huge ride. I don't, uh, I don't know the I exact didn't do length the of it. I know I didn't, but we were out there for two and a half hours yeah. today. We did a big yeah. loop and same thing. We got back to the office and we we're just one still, bar, one bar one down. <laughs> and, uh, I couldn't believe that. I honestly, cause we even rode and boost a lot, a lot. We did yeah. one bar. I, I was blown away. So um, there are people who will definitely be able to find the end of the life of this battery if and it's have your person in there just full boost, full time. But for the most part, 726 watt hours is a, is a big battery. It's a big tank. You'll, most people will have a very difficult time ever seeing anywhere near the limit. It's actually a kind of a nice feeling to finish and know you, you you still have battery left and you're not like wondering, can I boost it? Yeah. I'm tired. Can I keep going like this? Or do I need to drop it down into eco? And with this setup, you can pretty much just go for it. And I think there's benefits to it. If you wanted to take your bike to work and you wanted to do lunch rides, you don't have to worry about charging it all week. You can go for a lunch ride, come back, you know, lunch ride, and you can kind of just not be stressed about your battery. And I think that is a, it's a nice feature that, you know, sometimes like even last night uh, before today, I had forgotten to charge my battery and, um, shoot, I still could have done the ride yeah. today. The battery life I had left the two bars from Saturday's ride, but I didn't know that. So luckily I remembered and I charged it cause I was, you know, concerned, yeah. but I wouldn't even have had to have been concerned for that. So it, that is, that's a pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and then the charging on this bike before have to kind of get down by the bottom bracket to plug it in. Um, not that that was a big deal, but the new charging port is up by the head tube uh, and then the power buttons up by the head tube as well. And uh, you just taught me something today. The, um, those who've ridden Shimano motors in the past, uh, you had to basically not put any weight on the drivetrain, no torque on the motor. Otherwise it would error out when you turn on the bike. And now you can, uh, you could, you could just, just start pedaling and, and turn then it go, on. Oh, I haven't turned on my bike and just reach down <laughs> on the side of the head tube and turn the bike on. So yeah. that's pretty rad. It is. It's a it's nice to just be able to do that. It's easy. And I do like the location of the um of the power button and the charge mount also. I, I or the charging location. I like that a lot better for sure. It's cleaner looking too. And then if you do need to charge the bike the battery and you have to take it out of the bike. It's now two bolts, super yeah. easy to take it out. And then there's an adapter that we sell to put into the end of the battery and that allows you to use your charger off the bike. So if you're taking your bike someplace where it's super muddy or you, and you can't take it in the hotel or if you're in an apartment or something where it's just not really feasible, then Yeah, it, that's an it awesome feature. I mean, you were, you were saying that earlier and I never even thought about that. And um, I did take the battery out um, just because I've, you know, I'm one of the first people to be riding the bike. So I wanted to kind of explore it a little bit and it was very easy. And uh, 
I, I haven't done that on my other shuttle, um, but maybe it's because it was maybe more complicated before, so now yeah. it's easier. <laughs> this is just a wee bit more complicated. <laughs> 10 bolts. It wasn't really meant to be taken out on the other shuttle, although we have done it trail side. Yeah. It was a five minute deal, but if you dropped one of those bolts in the dirt, not super fun. Yeah, that And also a little good. harder to get it all lined up. The other neat thing about the bike is Again, 99% of the riders, 726 watt hour battery is, is they're just happy to have the most that you can possibly get. But we did make it compatible with two other battery sizes. So um, the bike can accept a 630 watt hour battery or a 504 watt hour battery. Um, they're all a Darfon battery, which uh, Darfon is one of the larger battery manufacturers in the world. Um, and uh, And so if somebody wants to take weight out of their bike yeah. that there's that potential absolutely as well. and that's kind of cool that you yeah. can offer that because not every rider is going to want to carry that battery around they're not going to necessarily always need that but I, for me with the e-bike it's just why not yeah <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah and most people think more is better and so of course <laughs> why not why not boost it all the time um some other nice features on the bike. There's a pretty major geometry change. Um, so the head angle before was, I believe, 65.3 degrees, and now it's 64.4, thereabouts. That definitely allows you to charge downhills harder. The 38 fork, you were telling me about your 36 in comparison on last year's bike. and Yeah, I did. I mean, honestly, bottoming it out all the time. Uh, no matter what I've done to the fork. So I have noticed a big difference with the 38. Um, it's definitely a lot of fork, but I'm using it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a bigger rider. So, you know, the, with the changes to the head angle um, and also the bottom bracket, the cranks have lowered considerably. Um, the original generation bike with 27.5 plus wheels had a fairly low um, crank bottom bracket height. Uh, this one actually goes a little bit lower and we go to 165 millimeter cranks so you can still pedal through stuff better than the original but it gets the stand over height lower um, it's the bike's just more of a charger compared to the old bike and you said you were riding some pretty yeah, gnarly stuff I did this I rode pretty gnarly trail on Saturday and um, it's just it's very stable definitely when you're hitting things straight on too and, um, and when it got gets steep I do feel like even off of drops and stuff, I just feel, um, I feel like there's, it's a little bit easier even just to roll down drops. I know it, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like it would always make sense that way, but I feel like the bike's just a little bit longer and um, I feel more comfortable on it for sure. Yeah, and along with that on the rear end, um, we've gone to a new metric length shock. We, we did a whole uh, basic redesign with Fox when we launched the Switchblade and they, they tested a whole bunch of new internals. So the shock really works a lot differently than the previous generation shock, and all those changes have gone into the new DPX2 on this bike. So um, it just flows oil better, uh, settles into its travel better. Um, valving is slightly different for the weight of the e-bike and, and the power coming on. But, uh, but yeah, you just get, especially on long downhills, um, there, there's better bushing overlap, more oil, um, shock just stays more consistent. So I'm not going to get all technical like that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I have, I have room to improve my suspension and work on it, but I've definitely been enjoying the upgrade for sure. Yeah. You go pretty fast. So <laughs> it, it works out well. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you probably know the most about the new Shimano motor, the EP8 motor, because, well, you've been working with Shimano and doing tech videos that are coming out soon on how to use the app with it. And um, the new motor's lighter, it's got more power. By power, it's still a 250 watt class right. one e-bike motor, but it goes from, I think your, the original 8,000 was 70 or 75 Newton meters of torque. Right. And now we go to 85 Newton meters of torque. And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about how that stuff all works. Um, well, I, I, I can start maybe with just even the E-Tube app. Um, it didn't work great before. Like I had a, always a connection issue. Um, now it, the, it works incredible. It just like we did it today trail side when I said, oh, my trail mode is just a little more too supported. 
Um, so I made that adjustment trail side. So that just alone was a great feature that's um, new to this um, to the the to the new drive, right? Is that what we're calling it? Drive unit, yes. Yeah, the drive unit. And um, and then um, the bike, you know, I just, I really love the new drive unit just for the, it doesn't surge as much through the gearing when I'm uh, when I'm in trail mode or definitely in boost. I notice, I feel like I, either I have better traction or um, it just seems smoother. It just seems like it it's working more for me than in the past. Um, so it's exciting to, to see those changes. And yeah, of course, it's like the delivery to the power delivery just seems a little bit different. Yeah, it's of course, like there's the more, but it's smoother. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's just the power delivery seems like it's working much better for me. And so, it, you know, especially on climbing, because I find, you know, you're more capable of climbing things that are maybe look a little bit more scary um, on a regular bike, but on an e-bike, you can climb things a little bit more easily. Um, and so I, I find from the prior model to this one, to the EP8, that this currently I'm having, I have better traction. I have a little more control when I'm climbing than I had before. So like today we were climbing <laughs> and we were doing some pretty techie climbing. Yes, very. <laughs> And, uh, Especially when you're not from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you were in the eco at first, and that maybe wasn't giving you quite enough juice for the steepness that right. we were on. And then you put it in the trail mode, and it was a little much. Yes, and so exactly. We stopped. Yep. And you made the adjustment. You made I, adjustment I, on your app. Yeah. And, and dropped it down a notch yep. for trail. And and then I felt like I had more con control and success. Even I could get out of the saddle and I didn't feel like I had any like skidding out of the rear wheel. So I think that's nice, a nice feature. And that's something, you know, even with Shimano, I'm going to make a video on how to use the app and how to go through it. And um, those are areas that I think are vital to your success on the trail because the standard app isn't always, the standard settings aren't always gonna work for everybody. Yep. And so you may like less eco and you know and less trail than what comes on it, or you like might like more eco and less trail, you yep. know, or, so it's, I, I do love the, um, the adjustability with the, the E-Tube app and uh, this, the EP8 for sure. So Shimano set up your bike from the f frame up uh, with all sponsor components and everything, but, um, the actual computer unit on the bike comes preset with two programs. Right. So you don't, even if you don't have the app, you have an option of two programs in there. So when your new bike comes from Pivot, it will actually have one that gives you max everything because some people just like everything all yeah. the time. You got to have that. And then the other one is pretty much identical to what we wrote today where we've got the, um, the eco set at a higher set, high setting and the boost set at a high setting, but that trail setting is one step off of the top one because I found the same thing. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a little too boosty up those steep technical loose climbs and just backing it down that one step. Yeah. It's just super nice. Oh, that's awesome. The other thing too, is before with the old motor, you had to really sh use those three settings a lot. So, if you got on a really steep hill, you have to boost it. If you got, um, if you if you were on a mild hill, um, you, I just would row back and forth between the three settings a lot. And now with the new trail setting, it it basically goes from near the basement of an eco setting and will then go up and give you the full 85 newton meters of torque. So I think for most people on most rides it's really almost to set it and forget it if they're yeah. happy with where they have that set in their app or one of the two choices that. that we provide. I so. can see that. I still like playing around with it, you know, but <laughs> but for people that don't want to, um, yeah, I can see exactly what you're saying. Yeah, he's got be. a real computer background. She's practically an <laughs> IT specialist. <laughs> so... <laughs> But I did use my app on the trail today, you did. so that was pretty impressive, one step right? Than me, so. <laughs> well, some did your kid show you how to use that app? No, but you, know, you she figured would, it out on your own. She, she would bag on me the whole time with me trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Give me that, mom. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, back the, to the bike. <laughs> back to the bike. Um, <laughs> Spec-wise, 
yours is obviously you're sponsored by Shimano, so you've got a full suite of pro components on the bike, stands, wheels, the stock spec on the bike. Um, we've got DT wheels on the bike. Um, the bike is Superboost 157. Um, and the coolest thing about that is we don't have to run as beefy a spokes and beefier e-bike specific rims. In fact, DT makes these wheels uh, special for, for Pivot. It uses their, uses their e-bike hub technology, but because of the wider spacing, wider flange on the hubs, we get a stronger rear wheel. And so same thing, you've got pretty lightweight carbon stands, wheels on your bike. Um, and it, that, that allows for building a really strong lightweight wheel. Uh, which you'll get on your stock shuttle. Um, and then we're running a combination of uh, Asagai front and Minion uh, DHR rear. You've got the Minion on your bike. Um, the, uh, the new bike has a new pivot saddle um, that is an e-bike specific saddle. It's got a nice handle on the back it of it. It is sick. I, I checked it out. Yeah. It is really cool. I like it. At first, Saddle companies started talking to us about e-bike specific saddles and I'm like, oh, that's, that's a little gimmicky. But the first time, yeah, like you have to lift it up, even just on your like rear bike rack and stuff, it, you just use it all the time. I, so that's super nice to have. That is a great feature. I really think so. I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to talk to Shimano about that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Kashima dropper, uh, full Kashima on the bike. And, uh, and then, yeah, your bike has an XT rear derailleur. The uh, production shuttle will come with XTR, um, XTR brakes, four piston brakes, and yeah, pretty much top of the line stuff yeah, on the bike. Yeah, definitely. So um, it's interesting, the, the fork weighs a little bit more than the 36, so there's a weight gain there. The motor weighs a little bit less. We get a very a slight weight gain on the overall bike because the battery, that 726 watt yeah. hour battery, is 50% more power. It's 50% more weight on the battery. Yeah. Um, but overall, with the bike being lower, um, we're still one of the lighter e-bikes at 48 pounds. And um, and yeah, it's just everything about the bike is is made to be able to hit stuff harder be smoother, just allow a higher level e-bike experience and taking advantage of the smoothness of that new motor and the additional um, 85 Newton meters torque. It's just, it takes the entire bike up a, a, a pretty huge notch versus the previous version. It does. Yeah, and the more I'm on it, uh, the more I'm starting to really fall in love with it like at the beginning you know it's all new so you're like okay how, what am I doing and once you kind of start to settle in with it you know like we were talking about the standover and I was like oh I haven't quite totally noticed that but now I'm now I'm going to pay attention to that but little things but comparing the two models yep. if we're going to compare but um overall it's uh it's 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 awesome awesome ride for sure well, cool. Well, thanks for taking the time. Yeah. To come thanks talk for inviting to me. About me. The bike. This was great. And, uh, <laughs> got to come. Got to come out of the out of California the first time since COVID hit. So oh. yay! <laughs> You'll so notice happy. we're six feet apart. Yes. Exactly. We measured that. <laughs> um, and yeah. So everybody, this bike will. Uh, well, by the time you see this, the bike will be out. Yeah. And um, it's it's just super fun. So. And if you're in the market. You're gonna this love is the it. One. You're gonna love it.